We are in a brand new development today, uh, approximately two years old. We decided to buy new, hoping not to have any problems. We have cracking grout, cracking tiles. We have too much movement in the floors. We've lost the bondability of the adhesive to the tile. We have more. We have more everywhere where there's ceramics. They get paid per house, not per hour, per house. So they want to lay it quickly. This is where all your tiles are pulled up in the kitchen. We paid good money for the house and we expected everything to be done right. And it's not. Like, oh, did they actually do this way? No, we did it. Not matters. You want a good job? GM shape. Okay, good. Thank you. God, I love my job. <laughs> We've been living here for over a year and a half. The home that we lived in before was about nine years old, and it came down to the point that it needed new windows. The flooring had to get redone, the carpeting, everything. So we decided to buy new, hoping not to have any problems. To our surprise, we ended up having more than what we expected. We felt that we should be getting uh, what we paid for, uh, but the, it seems like the builder's not keeping their part of the deal. We are in a brand new development today, uh, approximately two years old. We have cracking grout, cracking tiles, about 800 square feet of tiles in here. Beautiful homes, nice finish, not bad at all in the building, but they can't seem to get it right on these tiles. Three months after we moved in, that's when the grout started to lift. The grout was coming out in, in chunks. It's just lifting right out in pieces. My younger son had a terrible habit of putting stuff in his mouth too. It got to the point he was actually eating it. And actually a safety issue too, because the tiles are loose and because they're not leveled with the rest of the floor, I'm just concerned that maybe the children could even trip over it. Six months into it, having trouble getting the builder back in again. They did regrout the floor once, and again, it is cracked, and it will always crack. You'll have to go to the source of the problem and not just cosmetics. Hi, Rita. Hi, Mike. Nice, nice to see, see you again. I'm not sure which side the builder is on. Obviously, of course, they're gonna be on their side, but at the same time, they make me feel like as if they're with me, but then the next conversation that I have with them, I feel like they're just saying things to me to keep me happy. Well, come on in. This and I'll is the show tile you. floor, eh? Yes. The major problem that we have is, is the, uh, the grout that is coming out from the ceramics. Um, and one area that's quite noticeable at the moment is in the kitchen. I see. We even have a loose tile that I just stepped on there. Yes, actually quite a few. Let's just take a look at this. OK, well, they used a good thin set. We can see that they used at least a half-inch notch trowel. But as you can tell, it did not bond the tile. These guys are trying to lay it at a very fast pace because they get paid per house, not per hour, per house. So they want to lay it quickly. More than likely, he had laid so much down and plopped down his tiles that it started to dry. It did not bond to the tile. If he doesn't put that tile down in time and that thin set starts to dry, it is not going to bond to the tile. We have cracks all across there too, yes, eh? Yes, we have more this time. OK, these ones are not bonded. All right. You, see, you can knock on it. You can you just listen for hollowness. Oh, I don't like that. It doesn't sound like it's bonded. Anything that is solid will sound solid if you touch it. it. If you knock on it, it'll sound solid. Just like knocking on your wall. If you hit a stud, it sounds solid. You get in between the stud, you hear the hollowness. Yes. Same theory. So that tells me that we've lost the bondability of the adhesive to the tile. And for what reason? Why is it doing it? Do we have too much flexibility in the floor? So actually, let's go right to the basement and take a okay. look. This way. So we have 16 inch on center, eight inch steel I-beams, very good. In this case, we have two by 10 manufactured floor joists. I absolutely love them, but you have to brace them. After calling the builder many times and telling them about the grout problem to get them to fix it, I eventually got fed up and I called home warranty. That's good, I'm starting to hear them kick in. I like yes. that. And the builder came in very quickly. They brought in their own engineer to take a look at the flooring and their engineer suggested that under a tiled area, because of the 16 inch centers, that it should be supported more. Because well, there's too much movement in the floor. I take it, based on what I see, there was no bracing in the floor here. Now this is the bracing. That is not bad. They did a half decent fix here. Now I do like that they put up plywood, because what that's going to do is really give it even more strength, and they did go every four feet. By bracing every four feet, you have now made the floor really tight together, and that, mean, that means that the floor will move this way and not this way. This is where all your tiles are pulled up in the kitchen. They couldn't get braces in between, which I do understand. 
we want to carry it from here to here and here to here, and that's going to make a hell of a difference. Unfortunately, this is not good enough. Actually, at this point here, they had run out of material, and all they had left were some 2 by 10s Oh, my, come so they on. They just quickly put that in. The so. store's around the corner. It's yeah. not far. You run out of material. Is that an excuse or what? I'm sorry, we're out of material. <laughs> now, the hallway, this is kind of sloppy. Did they cut this four feet? They did. Okay, so they took it off the end trying to save material. I would have cut the plywood from one side to the other and even notched around this electrical to give me that much more because your tiles go right through here, right? Yes, they do. I mean, to pull all that up, resheat the floor, relay it, that's a very expensive job. This new product that's out there, it's a new cement coating that goes right over top of the tile. There's many types of finishes. You can make it look like ceramic. You can make it look like anything and color mix. I think you'll like it. So we'll bring in some samples for you to look at. Okay. And we're gonna redo your whole floor. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Please don't point out something I'm not gonna like. Look how easy this stuff comes off the floor. Bad oh, sign. Place. Trying to save time. So we have an ungrounded dishwasher. You don't care whether or not it works. Because they did not brace in between the floor joists, we have movement in the floors. It's nice when the builder gives you all the extras, but it's very important to know what's in behind all those extras. So we have to make sure that we pull up all the loose stuff here. We'll pull out the existing thin set and we'll lay some new thin set in and get the tiles bonded back down. So continue on and uh, what I'll do is I'll go take out the uh, three quarter round. It's not a bad job. I've seen a lot worse tile jobs, but it's just the cover of the book. There's no reason for this stuff to start falling apart in the first couple of years, let alone the first 10 years. I was talking to the uh, specialist from the coating company here and he says that we can lay the product and go up to the three-quarter round, but I prefer to pull it up, put down new. I always believe in going under the under anything you're doing, whether it's tile, going under the cabinets. In this case, we're gonna be putting a new product on top of the tile. Let's put it under the three-quarter round. It's not a lot of work to pull this up. Look at that, it looks like it's solid and everything. Look how easy this stuff comes off the floor. Bad the sign. Place. There's a mess. It's a lot harder coming up here mm -hmm. than it is a little bit further over. It's because it's tied into a mesh. The mesh is tied right to the wood. Six inches short. It would have taken them another three minutes to put down that much mesh. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tile come up. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to grab it from the bottom. I do not want to damage the baseboard. Don't ever go across it across the top because all you're going to do is dent it, scratch it. If you have it out far enough, then you can reach it in and come underneath it because by the time we put a new three-quarter round, it covers that. I pull this up. We put down the new product. I put up three-quarter round. I paint everything. I look good. It's done right. Please don't point out something I'm not going to like. That broken tile? I would like that just as I came up to it here. There's another one that's broken right here. Okay, leave that in. That's fine. The mesh will fix that. We're going to have to get this other piece back down. The mesh will fix that. They lay the first coat down, then the mesh, then the second coat, which really is enough to true up this floor. Anthony, thanks for coming. Hey, Ray. How you doing? Not so bad. Why don't you go down to the basement there and you can mix your stuff down there. Great. Thank you. All right, let's get this started. Now that uh, we've got the kitchen tiles adhered back down, got a couple more things to do before they lay down the first coat. They're even going to do a nice backsplash on the wall. I'm going to like that. But I have to pull the fridge stove, the toilet and sink, get the dishwasher out, because the last thing we want to do is go up to the dishwasher. We want to go underneath it. It's just the right way of doing it. I always put the screws back in so we don't lose them. It's too easy to put these aside, and somebody throws them out by accident. Now, this is something that really pisses me off. There's no L16 on the box for the junction, as well as they didn't ground it to the appliance. So we have an ungrounded dishwasher. If you want that definitely grounded, it is a water source. The only problem about disconnecting a dishwasher is there's not a lot of room. And it sounds like there's pressure behind that. Oh, God. Now that I turn the water off, we're leaking everywhere here. You know, it gives me a feeling. I think there's a brass shutoff under here. Brass is a, takes a lot more heat than the copper to heat up, so they heat the hell out of it. But they don't remove the top part, they burn out the wash. It's a useless shut off. It doesn't shut the water off. It's really the same thing as laying the tile. Uh, they're trying to save time and just go like crazy. They don't care of whether or not it works. Take the pressure off the house. Oh, they didn't even screw it in. We have two attachments here, metal brackets. 
and the idea for that is to screw them into the top plate that they put in here. So when you open up the door and you pull out all your drawers, it doesn't fall forward. It's not attached, right? It's just two screws. Just goes to show, sloppy, sloppy guys in a hurry, cutting corners, no ground, two screws missing, burn out the shut off. Look at that, the drain just popped off. Normally I want to see a little more hose in the cabinet here. So we have a shut off here. So they knew they burnt out the tap and they put a shut off here. At least now I can turn the water back on. No, I'm not worried about shutting off the power in the stove. We'll just unplug it. Well, now that we have reset the tile, the last thing I want to do is hit that threshold hard while we're going to break the seal again. We'll pick it up and put it over. Very good way of moving fridges, put it on a moving pad. Uh, well, these guys are uh, just finishing up all the taping on the trim here. Ben, just do me a favor, go in there and get rid of the toilet and sink. Now look at that, they built the toilet up with two rubber gaskets. Rubber gaskets are not good for toilets. This is what we used to use in the old days, okay? And two rubber gaskets, there's no sealant in between. I'm surprised this didn't leak downstairs. We're gonna remove this, we're gonna use a wax gasket, that's what I wanna see in here. It seals to the flange, it seals to the bottom of the toilet. You buggers. This is pure laziness. Yeah. No shutoffs on the sink, it's a brand new house. I want shutoffs under every sink so we don't have to shut the house off to pull the sink. I guess we'll put on shutoffs. How many homes here have problems with the tiles? The grout cracking, the tiles cracking. The developers say they're gonna build them to code. Let's build them to code. If you're gonna try and make it better, make it better. Call them and call them and call them. <laughs> Two years later, the builder comes back in and they try and beef up the floor joists. We have to uh, do a little more beefing up down here, Ben. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're totally fine in this area. This is the walkway right in front of the fridge. The fridge was here, so we're gonna have, we'll pull out these two braces, do the same across here, and then put some more braces in. And also in this area here, they only did a little bit. And it's funny that you didn't, why not get up over the ductwork? It works for me. Mm. So I think we will cut it in eight foot lengths and just, uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll okay. glue it, screw it, and then put in some more bracing. Uh, uh, truck it's so dirty. I'm going to uh, rip the plywood down to nine inches all the way down so we have full length strips rather than four foot strips. We have eight foot strips. Well, even though the TGIs are very strong, we're just gonna beef it up a little more and they get some braces in between that. Much like they did, which I like, they just did half of it. They didn't do the other half. So we're gonna hit where they did not and it will make the difference. I'm gonna match it up. I'm gonna do the same thing they did. Even though manufactured floor joists are incredibly strong, we will laminate to it so we have a better bracing effect. We'll slide it and get it in up over top of the beam of the ductwork here, and that way we just carry it a little more. So after we've got this in, we will cut two by tens and bring them across and screw them in, and that's what helps carry the load across. And this is the main area where we did have cracking grout and cracking tiles. 16 inch on center, two by 10 manufactured beams. I really like the way these homes are built, but to miss the bracing, one of the most important factors by code, this is gonna cause issues with your flooring upstairs. The developers should be standing up for themselves. They say they're gonna build them to code, let's build them to code. If you're gonna try and make it better, Make it better. There's just not enough manpower in the government to inspect all the thousands of new homes going up. The government will come in here and just randomly pick so many homes and go in and check them. Now, if they get too many complaints by the, the homeowners, the clients, then the government will step in, they will be fine, they will start checking them out with a fine tooth comb. But it shouldn't be up to the government. It should be up to the developer. If developers were to make sure that they do it right and then some, my guess is they're gonna do well in business. And publicize it, people will buy your homes. Hey man, we use manufactured floor joists, braced every three feet, codes every four feet. We have none in this home here. You know, they step in almost two years later and put in a little bit of beef up, some braces. You know, why didn't they do this before? Oh, well, we're finished down here and let's get ready to lay that new product down. A Little bit of vacuuming, we'll make sure we clean this floor thoroughly with some alcohol. And are you ready to go, Anthony? All right, let's do it. Okay, we're gonna dump the material out. Get some also. There we go. 
Well, the idea here is to put down the first layer, which is going to fill the grout lines. We can take our time. We're not in a hurry, but we'll do it in an area of about three feet at a time because this will dry quickly. Now it's time to lay down the mesh. What this does is gives us a strengthening from the first coat to the second. And uh, really, at the end of it, it gives us a nice flat canvas to work with. I notice you're not really concentrating on meat. It's just really flat. Yes, absolutely, because we are going to be hand sanding it. So any burrs, uh, any little lumps and bumps are going to be sanded back. OK. And there is a secondary coat that goes over top of this, just to ensure that we get a, a very flat, a even. much truer surface. Absolutely. OK. So I'm going to get out of your way so you can get going here. Oh, we're ready to go. All right. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you. Good, Anthony. I like it. It only took a couple hours for the first coating to dry. So what do we do now? We're going to put up the second coat, which will really true this up a bit. Yes, basically we're going to cover any of the mesh that, that is showing, uh, give us a completely nice smooth surface, smooth canvas to work with. And the trick is to keep it really thin, not thick. Absolutely. There, there's enormous amount of binder glue in it. Uh, we have to keep it thin. The actual design will be 16 by 6 inch tile-like on a 45 degree angle so it, it looks more dynamic. I like that. What really blows me away is that you can really do anything with your imagination. You're only limited by your own creativity. Now that the top coat is finished, it didn't take too long to dry, only a few hours. We sand down the irregularities in the floor, grab the vacuum, clean everything up, and next, Anthony. And then we'll start doing the exciting part, which is putting all the tape down and actually putting the design down. Now, there's many ways to finish this floor, but we're going to put some tape down to make it appear like ceramic tile. Like good contractors, we check twice just to make sure we're completely square. OK, we're, we're perfect at 90 degrees. We cannot guarantee that any of these walls are square. We create square on the floor to go with everything else. And that's the whole part of creating anything to do with tiles or laying a product like this. Nothing is ever square. You have to create square. We're going to lay down a third layer of this product on top. It's really the same stuff. It's a little bit thicker and richer. Uh, but we want to create the look of limestone. Using a sea sponge, we'll just texture the surface. Then using a trowel, we create a knockdown effect, really just to smoothen out the floor. This is what we call a wet on wet process, because we're doing everything in the wet stage. Now, now that you see that uh, tape coming up, it's starting to show a look of tiles. Now you want to make sure you stay within the area that you can reach, because this, this product dries rather quickly. So you take your time and, and work in front of you. I'm telling you, these guys make it look easy, but in reality, you better be a pro doing it. We're looking at a four or five day procedure here for this whole entire 800, 900 square feet, right? Yes, it takes between four, four and five days okay. um, with, with all the drawing times in between. It's a new cement coating that goes right over top of the tile and we're gonna redo your whole floor, okay? Thank you. Thank you. To save us some time, we'll paint this trim, then we'll install it. Then after, we don't have to tape all around the new uh, floor that's upstairs and paint it again. That'll save us a lot of time. At this point, the tape has been removed. The gelstone has been cured to the point where it's completely solid. Uh, now it's porous. It will actually accept uh, the pigments. It's actually cement. We have 30 different colors of the gelstone product. We'll just sprinkle it down and rub it in with a damp sponge. Once we get about a three foot by three foot area, we'll pull off the excess. And as you can see, we're trying to achieve an even color. These are the accent colors. That's what we're going to do is just accent certain parts of the actual tile formation and then rub it in. And then we have the lighter value in certain areas. And it adds to the realism of the actual stone. The last step is to seal the jewel stone with the 100% uh, epoxy. We'll just put it on the perimeter of the room. Now we're just going to pull it forward about four feet. It darkens about 15 to 20%, and now the beauty of the color and the design pops out. 
All right, let's bring in the homework. Rita, Daniel, come on in. Hi, Mike. Sorry to keep you kicked out of your house for a week. Not a problem. I'm sure it was worth it. It looks fantastic. It's what a wonderful. difference, eh? Looks like it's almost uh, piled, doesn't it? Perfect. Come on and take a look. After you. I love the uh, the diamond pattern on the angle and the border. That's what you that. chose, right? Yep. I like the colors you picked, too. Yes. And the border, it really gives it a bit of effect, doesn't it? Very nice. Well, we cleaned your place up. We made a hell of a mess in yeah. there, I will have to admit. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Let's go take a look at the kitchen. This is the part I like. Come on in. Wow, look at the backsplash. Oh. Isn't that amazing? Beautiful. That's beautiful. Just what I was looking for. Very nice. Very happy. I love the epoxy finish on this. Extremely durable, so it'll stand up to walking with your shoes on, muck, you name it, the kids. Mm -hmm. So it'll take it. We remember this was the biggest damage area or the problem area. Uh, right. There's a little bit in the hallway and a little bit at the front over there. It was really nice to see the builder come back in and beef it up the way he did. And uh, for that, I got to give him a pat on the back. But we it just did a little more, extended it a bit down there. Now it's not going to be a problem. No, it's not at all. It's, no, it's gorgeous. When you're buying a new home, everyone assumes you're going to buy a perfect home. There's not going to be a problem. Why? Because we have great standards of code here. Minimum code requirement. Doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. We lived in an older home. We thought, well, let's move into a new yeah. home with less headaches because the home that we were in before needed a lot done to it. So, let's so move we thought, let's move a into a new home. Problem-free home? Exactly. When you're buying a new home, check out the developer. Check out the home builder. Ask for references. Ask for, is he using licensed people? You know, it's the same thing as a contractor. There is no difference. You want to know everything to do with the builder, same thing as you do with the contractor. Thank you very much. My job is done. Fantastic. Yes. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you very much, Mike. Keep smiling. If you want to avoid this problem, do your homework. Educate yourself. Simple as that. Good job, another yeah. good day. Good day.